For 30 years, we've been trying to replace triangles in computer graphics. But what if we had it backwards the whole time? What if the very thing we're trying to throw out, the triangle, is actually the most advanced way that we can achieve computer graphics, but not just use the same triangle, use a new, better triangle? I not only tested this newest research, I'm gonna actually show you the results and prove that these triangles are better than anything we've seen in the past. Here's something that might blow your mind. The foundation of computer graphics, everything behind animation, games, 3D renderings is fundamentally broken. For the last 30 years, we've tried to represent everything using triangles, but triangles are really terrible at it. Just look around you, your face, plant on your desk, even this monitor that you're watching this video on right now is not perfect triangles. Instead, it has an organic, smooth shape that we just cannot make up with triangles. But in the world of 3D graphics, everything is made of triangles. Secret, tiny, little triangles. Millions of them to reproduce a complete world or even just a face. And to get a face like mine to look realistic, you need at least 200,000 triangles or even more if you're trying to do it for a movie. And that's not efficient. This is the triangle problem the fundamental mismatch on how a computer has to represent the world and how the real world actually exists. So in 2020, this whole world took a pivot, enter the world of nerfs. Instead of representing the world with a bunch of tiny triangles and textures on top of them, we thought, what if we could train an AI to learn how light interacts with the scene? What we ended up was called a neural radiance field or a nerf. You could feed photos from different angles into a nerf and you could get photorealistic output from any angle you want to look at and it was pure magic. No triangles, no mesh, just an AI that understood light itself. But there's a catch that killed it for most people. It took hours to train one of these. And even when you had one of these beautiful nerfs trained, it was painfully slow to render one of these. We were talking about one or two frames per second. That's not gonna work for a game. That's not gonna work for a movie. We need something much better. So it looks like in 2023, our problems were solved. Enter 3D Gaussian splatting. So instead of neural networks, we actually represent the world with hundreds of thousands to millions of tiny little fuzzy blobs. These are Gaussian splats. And if you overlap these and put them together, you could start representing the world in a really photorealistic way. And guess what? Since there's something that a computer already knows how to render, we ended up with frame rates that were extremely fast. We're talking about 60 frames per second up to a thousand. This is great for games. This is great for looking on a mobile phone. We thought our problem was solved, but this is where the story gets interesting. Instead of representing the world with millions of triangles, we're now representing the world with millions of round blobs. But that just creates its own sort of triangle problem. Think about it. If I have a flat table and it's got a flat surface or a flat wall and I want to represent that surface, I could use, what, two triangles to make that nice flat surface. However, if I want to do it with Gaussians, I'm going to need millions of them. You get to the edges of a wall and you need tons and tons of little blobs to make that straight line and it's never perfect. So we really just have the same triangle problem, but with blobs instead of triangles. So it's 2025 and researchers have been asking, what if we don't use blobs? What if we use a different shape, a different primitive to represent the world? So they tried convexes and these convexes are amazing. They can be morphed into different shapes. They can have hard edges like a real world, like a triangle that you'd have in a triangle mesh, or they can have a Gaussian distribution where the edges get fuzzy. And when you put the convex points around, you can make them into spheres, or you can make them into flat disks like a square or a pentagon or all sorts of different shapes. And it seemed like our problem was solved. But what's even better is researchers said, what if we just try this exact same thing from convexes and try it with triangles? Because it has less points, but we can pretty much make a new type of triangle, one that can be fuzzy and one that can be hard edged. And combining these, you can really reproduce a whole scene in 3D and it should look better than anything we've ever done. And to put the cherry on top, again, we're getting to triangles, something that a GPU knows how to render, so we're gonna get thousands of frames per second. It's elegant, it's simple, and it just works. Sounds cool, right? 
Well, I had to dive into the paper and download the code and see for myself because just reading about this project and seeing some cherry pick results doesn't let me know exactly how good it really is. So I'm gonna jump into my PC and I'm gonna show you some real results side by side with 3D gaussian splatting, the current king of 3D representation and show you how much better these results really are. Time out, a quick break before I jump into the results of my tests. If you ever wanted to explore projects like these that I'm showing on my channel, you always think I can't get into this. I don't know Python, I don't know code, I don't know programming, I get it. The truth is you don't have to become a full-time programmer to pick up these projects and start learning from them. I myself am not a programmer. All you need to know is some building blocks of programming and get a problem solving mindset. So when you run into issues, you know how to programmatically go through it and solve your problems. That's why I love Brilliant, today's sponsor of this video. Brilliant is a hands-on learning platform for people who want to learn to think better. With hands-on lessons on programming and computer science, and even some advanced topics like AI and neural networks. And personally, I travel a lot for work and this is a great platform for when I'm on the go. I can pull it up on my iPhone or my iPad and I can start doing lessons when I'm at the airport trying to kill some time. Whether it's a delayed flight or I'm just winding down at my hotel, I can pull up the app and I can sharpen skills that I wanna get better at. What I really like about the courses in this is that I'm not actually watching some sort of coursework. I'm not watching some MIT professor talk about Python or concepts. I'm actually building problem solving skills so I can apply these same skills to whatever project I'm doing in real life. And I can learn them in smaller bites. So I don't have to sit there and watch one hour at a time to learn something. And if you like to keep up with the videos that I like to make, I do suggest checking out their programming course because you can start building a program in day one using their course. Really helpful. You're not just gonna watch making loops for the next two hours before you start building on your skills. So if you wanna try everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days for free, you can go to brilliant.org slash pixel reconstruct or scan the QR code on this screen. Or better yet, you can just go to my description and click the link to take you to my special page where you'll also get 20% off an annual subscription plan. Okay, so back to the results because what I have to show you surprised me. Jonathan here, mid-edit, and I realized I never named this project in the video. It's called Triangle Splatting, if you haven't figured that out by now. I'm gonna make sure I link the project in the description of this video so you can go and start building it and testing it on your own. So anyways, let's get back to that video. Before I show you the results, I did wanna show you the GitHub page just in case you wanna pull the code yourself and see what your results look like. It's a really easy project to get going. Basically, you just need Python 3.11 and CUDA 12.6. You can try different versions. I have a feeling it's gonna work, but you simply just clone the project. Then you need to create an environment. They use Micromamba in this one. I actually use Conda and it worked just fine. So you basically swap that out for Conda. And then from here, you'll notice the first thing it says is compile.sh which is a Linux based compiler. I did run this in Linux just because it was easy to get going. But if you go up to the top, you notice they also made a compile.bat file in this project, which you can run for Windows. So this should technically run on Windows. So just change this to a .bat and then you can install everything from here on out. And then to run this, if you've used 3D Gaussian Spotting, the original code, it trains just the same way. You use python.train, then you're gonna do a path to your scene, a path to the model output, and you can go from there. Super easy to use. So there's one big catch with this project. It is so new, so cutting edge, that there isn't a real-time viewer that I can show you the data by just moving around in real time. But we can render out stills and we can render out a video and we can use that as a comparison. If you look at the project, as simple as running Python create video, and it'll create a video of that scene as a circular fly around. But what we really care about is the renderings because when you're comparing a radiance field to another one, what you wanna look at is the ground truth images compared to what it rendered with the splats to see how correct it represented the real life. And with those, you get a set of scores. These metrics are SSIM, which looks at the structural similarity of the synthetic rendered image against the real life image. Then you have PSNR, which is the peak signal to noise ratio. And it's gonna look pixel by pixel and see how much is actual signal versus noise in the data. So if you have a higher value of that, you know it's gonna look more like real life. And the last one is LPIPS, 
which is a new form of evaluating these synthetic data sets, which tells you how much an AI perceives that the synthetic data looks like the real scene. And you want that value to be closer to zero or to look more like real life, less that we'll notice isn't a real life video. So as I compare these data sets, I'll make sure I put those metrics from both triangle splatting and 3D Gaussian splatting on the screen so you have an idea of how much better each data set is because not everyone is exactly the same when it comes to being better than the others. Okay, so here's the first scene and I'm gonna show you the 3D render of this Ferrari. It's really cool and I'll also have the metrics on the screen. Notice that you want PSNR to be higher and the other two to be lower and that's how you know one's better. So now let's actually look at these side by side. It's really hard to really pick out differences, but there is some. So if I like look right in here in this area, this right one is, we're always gonna have on the right side, we're gonna have the triangle spotting results. On the left side, I'll make sure I always have the original 3D Gaussian spotting results. But if you look at things like this right here, this reflection in the car versus this side, this doesn't have as much detail. You can actually see these like little brick reflections in the triangle splatting. So it, it did pick up some higher, what we call like a higher frequency uh, of the detail. Another one is this, this pulling tight on this caliper here. You got these like individual dots that did not work well in the 30, 3D Gaussian splatting. So again, these are minor details, but they do make a difference in the end. Things will definitely look better when all those little details are perfect. And here's one more view. If you look at this, we have these fir trees that are being reflected more accurately in the paint here versus here, which is more smudgy or blobby, not exactly what it looks like in real life. And what it really does well in triangle spotting is the backgrounds. So if I really zoom in tight through here, it's, it probably doesn't look great on my screen, but you have this kind of smeary effect in things that are really far off, like this shrub back here. And here you gotta pick up some of those details. And that makes a huge difference when you're trying to do more of a larger scene, which we're gonna see in another example, when you have things that are further away, they just look a little better. So looking at these two, you're not like, wow, that is amazingly better, but those tiny little, little details do add up and make a huge difference. So here's a castle in Ireland, and this is the 3D rendering generated from triangle splatting, and I'll also have the values on the screen so you know the higher PSNR the better and the lower the other values also better. And if I jump into the results here, I'm showing you this castle side by side. Again, left will be 3D Gaussian splatting, right will be triangle splatting. And the first thing I notice right away is that the background preserves more details, and I see this consistently from capture to capture. So if I come way over here and Everything kind of looks real smeary in the background versus this looks a little bit more sharp. You can see that triangle shape of that rooftop is much better on one than the other. And especially this, this kind of smeared effect that you get in the clouds. So the clouds aren't perfect in 3D Gaussian splatting. Things tend to get smeared. And let's, let's just look at some other details, see if I can pick out anything else. Um, these, these two compared are actually pretty good, but again, a little bit sharper around these areas. This grass here just looks like generic green versus um, the detail preserved. And look at this tree. This tree is a big difference here. This tree is pretty smeared and this one's not. Um, and then I'm gonna move to a, one other image. And again, I wanna show you back in these fields, you don't have this great S curve of a path that was cut through it, but you do see that a lot better in this. And in general, the background is just more sharp. These trees are have, have more details preserved and it may be hard to see, but even more foreground. Look at this castle here in the 3D Gods and Splatting. It's kind of smeared and that's not what's happening in triangle splatting. So these triangles are able to preserve this data a little better, which is amazing. Um, and if you go to the, like the more and more foreground, you even do start to see things fall apart here on the fringes here. This is much closer to the camera versus down here, it's looking much better. So I just see this consistently. It's, you're not gonna see these results and be like, oh my goodness, that's day and night difference, but it is definitely better than anything we've ever seen. I wanna show you one last castle because I like castles as a comparison, just to show you one more result as a comparison. Okay, these results are pretty incredible. 
I think they actually look good on both results, but I am able to find some inconsistencies. Again, you can see these Gaussian spikes at the top of these mountains, eh, not the greatest, but I wouldn't say triangle splatting was perfect either. So it isn't the perfect uh, method. It, it did have some light streaks in the background. That's what we're seeing, but you could tell that these are more trees than that was. And again, if I move around, I'm sure I can find plenty of areas where we have some inconsistencies in details. But overall, these were actually probably the closest of the two scenes that I have tested so far. But you see here at the top, you kind of have some of these smears right above the top of the roof and over here, and none of that exists with triangle splatting. So triangles, again, are winning the day. It's all these fringes, all these little things, and they make a huge difference when you compare the two. And here's one last comparison, looking at the two directly head on. Again, where you have a lot of good images, things look pretty much the same. You're not gonna see a big difference. Like looking at these two, they look roughly the same. But if again, we look around at the trees, at the background, look at that. Look at this side here, it's, it's all smeared. It doesn't look good. It looks like something's really going on. Whereas here, I got all that forest, all those trees, everything turned out great. Let's go down. Maybe we'll find one other big inconsistency. Um, I do like the people who are standing around. Even they got captured really well. But um, overall, these two are really close. I'm seeing most of the issues are around these trees, around things like this area and this area where things get smeared. But the main focus, the buildings still look pretty good. And that's what I find out, that most of the time you're going to see those inconsistencies around the edges. And if I still say make this the 3D Gaussian splatting zoomed out, you don't see those right away. If I first glance, my eye is drawn to this castle, but it's these areas that don't look as good. And if we look at the triangle splatting, you can see that it looks much better. And now I'm going to do one more thing on this one. I'm gonna bring what's called the ground truth out. So if I go to the ground truth data, we can see what the actual image looked like. So here's ground truth. This is not synthetic. This wasn't rendered, this was the actual data. And so I'm gonna pull this guy to the left and the triangle splatting to the right. And in some of those areas like here uh, with the triangle splatting, we'll see how close they look. You know, they look pretty much the same. It's hard to know that one wasn't the real picture versus one that was rendered. That just shows you how good those details are. It had some issues on this side as well in the Gaussian splatting, but boy, those look almost identical. So that just gives, goes to show you like how good you can get these images from triangle splatting. They look like real life. But there is one big giant catch. We didn't have a real-time viewer. And why is that? Well, part of that's because this is research. And with research, you don't have out-of-the-box compatibility. And the bigger issue with this is the fact that everyone has already built their software to work with triangles and starting to see the world move towards 3D Gaussian splatting. And what that means is your render, what makes this show up in your screen, has to work for triangle splats, which are uniquely different. And so have we hit that moment where it doesn't matter? Well, we might be looking at the best version possible and the world has passed us by because we're building a world for triangles that are normal with textures and we've built a world for 3D God and splatting. It just might not matter. But I really hope this video convinces you and convinces the software developers to start building on this technology because I know that 3D Gaussians are not gonna be the answer for the future. So what is your take? Are you team 3D Gaussian splatting? Are you team triangle? What do you think of the results? Should we throw everything that we've done already out and start building on this because it is better? Or is what we have good enough? Leave a comment if you got this far and tell me what team you're in and why. And as always, like and subscribe to this channel because it means so much to me so I can bring more videos just like this to you in the future. Well, I'll see you guys in the next episode.